Hello everyone and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we are going to be checking out a little thing called King's Ascent, a very very cool platformer with a surprisingly deep and kind of engrossing story I have to say, a well written game. Uh, this is one of those cases where I started to play this to do a sound check and I found that by the time uh, I reached a point where I felt like I needed to stop I had already played like 95% of the game uh, and that's not to say that it's extremely short or anything, it's actually got more to it than I expected it to have just was extremely addictive and, you know, time just went by. Uh, so anyway, this is less of a first impression and more of a second impression. Regardless, uh, it's one that I did not want to pass up the opportunity of showing you because I have a feeling this is one of those games that if you just saw a thumbnail of it or a screenshot or something, you might go, hey, uh, I don't know if this is quite my thing. However, once you see it with a little bit more uh, framing, you might appreciate it more. Anyway, that's how I felt. So let us start a new game. There is a little bit of uh, dialogue, there are a few cutscenes and such, but I think they're fairly central to the experience, so I will leave them in, and I will just be quiet for those. So, enjoy. Here we go. Not so many years ago, a terrible dragon started ravaging the northern lands. She devoured livestock, and would easily fight off all who tried to stop her. In response, the king devised a cunning plan to stop the monster. He held a great banquet in its honor. He showered the dragon with praise and fed it until the beast was stuffed. Once the dragon was sedated by its own gluttony, the king's knights leapt from their hiding spots and slew the creature. The king then built a great tower to watch over the people and remind them that they were safe. Alabaster? Dravius? Where are you? We are supposed to be having a meeting. Alabaster, come here. When a king asks for his sorceress and his general to come to a meeting, they should. Why? Alabaster. Dravius. Are you here? Anyone? Ah! Guards! Guards! Come quickly! Guards! Alabaster? Dravius? Someone! Help me! Alright, so there's our cutscene, and that does set up what's going on pretty well. I have to say, uh, I was pretty impressed just by the fact that there was actually voice acting. I know it's a little silly to say, but... Uh, it's not something that you see all that often, actually, in a lot of Flash games, or a lot of, uh, you know, free games in general. Uh, there's a decent sense of art to it, I think the, there's actually some writing, uh, and in general, uh, this is a game that seems pretty promising. Uh, I was a little disappointed, however, of course, the, uh, the voice acting could have used a little bit more uh, work on the sound design front. It wasn't exactly the most uh, clear. It sounded quite compressed, actually, unfortunately, but I only say that because it seemed really well done anyway, so I would have, uh, you know, we got so close, why not just make it perfect? Uh, regardless, I'm not in control of that, and I'm not particularly good at sound design myself, so I can't really complain. Um, anyway, as you can see here, we've got this uh, bone dragon here. And if you follow along with the subtitles that are showing up up above, essentially what I'm doing is we're actually reading through the story uh, as we proceed up this path of blocks, and my goal here is to knock the blocks onto the bone dragon by walking off of them at the moment when it's under me. And of course if it catches up to me, that would be a death. There doesn't seem to be any kind of, uh, you know, punishment though for dying, so really there's not a whole lot to worry about other than just repeating a small section of the game over a few times. Which, uh, as you get further on to things, uh, you may actually end up doing that. Uh, so there's a number of different ways you can attack, and there are also a number of beasts that we'll encounter as we go forward. Uh, so we'll just need to try and look for the best paths we can, and just sort of look for uh, a good way to get to the top. Uh, we'll not basically using too many of our resources wrong. Uh, there is actually a limit to how far you can go, and if you don't end up reducing the dragon's HP to zero by the time you reach the top of each area, you sort of enter this strange zone where you can't really win, and then you just sort of have to lose. But that doesn't seem to happen uh, through the whole game. That only happened to me about once. I'm just gonna wait for the dragon to catch up a little bit here, and I actually got quite a ways ahead of it. Uh, by breaking through those, I don't know what you want to call them, those little uh, scaffoldings, that actually unlocks or opens up some of the blocks that are covered over. So it may be a good idea to do that earlier rather than later. 
just so I have access to that springboard, uh, which will propel me up quite a ways higher. Uh, so I mentioned, of course, there are a few beasts, and each beast has its own story and framing to it, and then that all fits into a, a larger overarching narrative, and I feel a little bad talking over so much of it, uh, because the fact that the story's being revealed as we play it is kind of a cool dynamic element that I don't see done too much. It, it also lends to a sense of urgency in the thing chasing you, uh, because all too often chase scenes are always depicted as these weird silent affairs, and I understand that probably happens sometimes, uh, but I think a lot of the time, if something is chasing you, you're going to be trying to understand or reason your way out of it if possible. My lord, my lord. are you all right? Where were you, Dravius? You left me to fight the dragon, alone. I'm sorry, my lord, but we couldn't get to you. Could not get to me? Useless! Where is Alabaster? I am here, lord. Alabaster, finally. Do you have any idea what happened? Well, it was clearly an event of great magical power, but I will have to do some work before I understand it. Perhaps we should move you to one of your other castles? Yes, I do believe that would be safer. A few years ago, a drought struck one of the largest cities in the kingdom, and it struck right before the great festival of the king. Everyone in the city was worried that the festival would fail. The king did not want to see his people so despondent, so he searched far and wide, until he found a small town that was willing to let the city borrow its water. The king volunteered his own men, and they worked day and night to dig a great channel connecting the town and the city. Once the channel filled with water, the people rejoiced and had the grandest festival they had ever seen. You sent for me? Have you discovered something? Do you remember why you built this castle? Of course. I saved this city from a drought. They were grateful enough to give me land. Does this castle have something to do with the dragon attack? Do you remember how you stopped the drought? Yes. I redirected water from another town. Does that have something to do with the attack? Do you remember where the water came from? Like I said, another town. What is with these questions? Did you remember that everyone in that town had to leave? Did you remember that it was my home? I'm sorry that it was your home, but this happened years ago. Is now really the best time to get angry about it? Yes. Because now I can do something about it. What is that? One of the creatures that used to live in the river. I resurrected it for you. Guards! It's happening again! Help! Dravius! Someone! You all are useless! I have to say, that sounded a little bit like he channeled some C-3PO there. Regardless, still, pretty cool. Uh, so we've got some new gameplay conventions here as we now have to fight this new beastie. Uh, in this case, we are positioning spikes by basically just running across them, and uh, as the further we go across, the longer they get as a bridge. And then we've got these two directional platforms with spears attached, and we just gotta make sure we stand on the right direction uh, to propel it towards our enemy here. And each beast as we go uh, ends up having slightly more energy, so the fights do take a little longer. Uh, it's pretty cool, though, that they've actually worked uh, an overarching narrative into this. And uh, I haven't even made mention of the fact that this has outstanding music, by the way, uh, through the exposition and through the actual game itself, as well as uh, in the credit sequence. Uh, I'm not sure if this is all the developers uh, that made this music, but whoever made it, you know, did a really good job and it fits really well with the game. Uh, even, uh, like I said, the art style goes pretty well with it as well. Oh, and I accidentally fell there. Uh, yeah, if you fall too far, you can't really come back. Even if the enemy doesn't attack you directly, there's like a cloud of death skeletons next to it which takes you out. And if you simply take too long as well, that also uh, does not bode well for your character. It's kind of funny, the character reminds me a little bit of a mix between like Don't Starve and Breed. Which is kind of just like, I don't know, this is just maybe a little funny observation, but... Something about the art style between the two of them. 
I got permission to use the town's water. From the mayor you appointed, you thought the residents wanted their town ruined? I gave everyone money to move. And tore my home apart. And kind of cool that they went after some actual, like, relevant issues that people might have. <laughs> like, instead of just, whoa, that dude just kind of flew off there. I am actually playing this with a 360 controller, although it doesn't natively support it, I mapped it with Joy to Key, uh, the free controller mapping software, and if you're not familiar with it, feel free to go grab a copy, it is extremely helpful and I use it all the time. Uh, but this actually plays really well uh, with the keyboard itself, but I just thought I would do better uh, using the 360 controller, and I'm pretty sure I was correct about that. Let's see if we can just finish this guy off. Another one. There we go. Make tough decisions as a leader. And this city had enough water to survive. You just wanted a festival. Pretty amazing that they could establish tension also with so little character setup. I mean, you know basically nothing about any of these characters, and yet all of a sudden it, it already feels a little bit suspenseful. Uh, so definitely good work on that by the developers. And the background art is actually quite pretty as well. You tend not to look at it too much just because you're, you're facing these uh, imminent beast threats. Uh, but for the most part, all of the art looks pretty nice. I have to say, it's probably the 3D rendering on the enemies, I think, clashes a little bit uh, with the rest of the game, but it's not that bad. I wonder a little bit what these little orbs are about. Maybe they're trying to direct me to go a certain way. Uh, I haven't really had much trouble finding a path through... Uh, each area though, so I don't know if that's the case or what, but uh, I probably didn't need them anyway. Now if you're real good, you can actually grab multiple of these spike bridges here, which do pretty massive damage. So this is a position where if I don't hit enough of these... Okay, I might have actually gotten to the top without there. finishing it. I have destroyed a second one of your monsters. What now? I wanted to apologize for what happened to your town. It was unfortunate, and maybe I did not fully realize the effect it would have. But that does not excuse what you have done. My lord, you're alive. Yes, barely. I had to fight a monster on my own. Again. Where were my guards? I'm sorry, my lord. When the spell hit, the castle fell apart. We could not find a way to reach you. Again, Dravius? The same excuse? No matter. Listen, I have grave news, but I do not want to tell you here. Quickly, take me away from this place. Years ago, the kingdom was invaded by a barbaric neighboring country. Their army was more powerful, and our king's court feared defeat. But the king refused to give up. He sent out a small regiment to meet the army, though badly outnumbered. They faced the enemy and fought bravely. Suddenly, the king's full army attacked the invaders from behind. The small regiment had just been a distraction. The resulting confusion allowed the king to easily win the day. While his people celebrated, the king commissioned a great monument to the diversionary force so that their sacrifice would never be forgotten. It is made all the worse by the fact that I trusted her. I really did. I thought she knew how much I valued her. Maybe I should have shown my appreciation more. I could have built a monument in her town's honor. Yes, my lord. Are you listening? I don't think she wanted a monument, my lord. She's here! Get her! Dravius! Do something! Dear God, what is that? It's the regiment you sent on a diversionary attack. Or what little Alabaster could find. Ah! <laughs> this king just keeps getting himself into worse problems every couple minutes here. Alright, so I actually botched that on the very first move. Uh, so this guy essentially will keep throwing spears up at us and we just have to ride these platforms uh, you'll notice they have these little rings of light around them. And uh, essentially if they run out of those rings of light, they'll just break away. Alright, 
was a hero. All of these men were. Without their honorable sacrifice, many more could have died. You'll never know when they needed to die, my lord. This was the first and last plan that you considered. Oh, okay, I almost won there, but I just happened to walk into that spear. Background art on this one, it may be a little bit less pretty than the other ones, but it actually has some nice details to it. Please, just there tell we go. It actually works way easier. Yeah, it does actually tend to get a little harder as you go. I'm not going to say that the whole thing is particularly hard, but towards the very, very end, and I think there's well, one more uh, fight after this, things actually get pretty challenging, and you have to be really on top of uh, planning out your paths really fast, because the, the enemy essentially is going to be like right on top of you as soon as you wake up, or you start running. Uh, a little trickier there with that spear. There we go. Tell me, Alabaster. What did you say to Dravius to make him betray me? What did I say? After what you did! After all of these years, I... had hoped for better from you. Now, there is one last castle for you to see. Guards? Long ago, this country was ruled by a selfish tyrant. He did not care at all for his people, choosing to let them struggle while he pampered himself with the luxuries of the throne. The lord who would eventually become our king saw the suffering of the people and knew in his heart that he could do better for them. He set out to take control of the throne away from the evil tyrant. Gathering support within the court, he launched a surprise attack against the tyrant. And even though the tyrant was in his own castle, no one came to his aid. All wanted to see him fall. After that, our king ascended the throne and began a new era. How many times will you make me go through this? Just once more. I... I wasn't that bad of a king, was I? I had hoped for better. But perhaps you could have been... Worse. I never did get the chance to look my killer in the face. That thing is creepy, isn't it? Actually, it reminds me a little bit of the Four Kings. So essentially, it's uh, a couple of disembodied hands and a torso that'll be chasing me up this one. Uh, we've got some of the old mainstays from the first level, these spires and such, as well as some blocks, and then we mix together all of the... Uh, different combinations of attacks that we've had from the other levels. So with a little bit of luck, I should be able to make it up through this. Whoa. And you can tell, of course, he's got quite a bit of HP compared to the previous ones. Whoa, that was a terrible jump. The uh, controls, by the way, are actually quite good. I just occasionally, uh, since I'm using the controller, uh, I just sort of Flub the D-pad a little bit, if that makes any sense. You were evil. A tyrant. You deserved what you got. I have no remorse. And you expect more from me. Now those hands will get you if you don't keep moving, but thankfully the little spike walls will actually knock everything back just a little bit. Usually enough to give you a little distance. I want to get to that big spire right there. Oh, oh, landed right on his hand. Oh well. At least there's a checkpoint after each moment, so if you lose, you don't really lose too much progress. Now, I want to be on as many of these spiky things as possible. Occasionally, I'm going to miss them, though. Uh, that's probably fine. Just did some, like, random jumping there. Uh, you can actually navigate around the dude if he actually tends to be to one side or the other, so it's not like just having him at a certain altitude means you can't go to that altitude. You just actually have to watch out. Oh, see, I couldn't do much about that. I almost won too. Or almost beat that level anyway. Or sub-level. Uh, the way that they construct the actual, you know, each phase of the game is kind of interesting to me in the fact that it's not just, like, broken up into levels. It's like a little narrative 
uh, and each narrative actually complements a bigger narrative, it's not something you see done all that often. Uh, and the fact that the gameplay actually stays pretty much at the forefront of the concept is kind of amazing as well, considering it also seems to be pretty story-driven. See, if I missed that jump, that probably would have been the end. I was not and we're good. But you were just cruel. People starved while you stuffed yourself. Towns were raided and you did nothing. I was the ruler of this country. It was my right to do with it as I saw fit. So I have a feeling we're probably going to draw a parallel between this tyrant and my character, uh, the pseudo-evil king. I mean, he's sort of like, not necessarily overtly evil, but at least maybe misguided is a better word for it. Uh, I'm not doing so good on this one. Probably should have, yeah, let myself go on that. Should get a couple of spikes in the way, and up. I think I missed a bunch of these platforms on the way up. And I don't think I did any spikes on this level at all, which is probably bad. I think we're doing a little bit better already, actually. Uh, these spikes are definitely going to have to come out. You have to do a little bit of strategic thinking when it, it gets to this point. Hopefully at least one of those will hit. Oh, those spires. There we go. Of course I was. And I was content. You waste so much time trying to make yourself feel good about the things that you do. I tried to make good decisions. You always talk about trying to make the right decisions after you've already made the wrong ones. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> there's not a lot of ambiguity about that for sure. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the deepest story per se, but I think it's uh, at least presented well for what it is. And it does have an air of it uh, that seems to be reasonably well produced. Uh, so I need to just keep after these blocks and more spires. Uh, I hadn't beaten this, by the way, in my previous run, so this will be new ground for me if I can make it there. I think, okay, I wasn't sure I could make, oh. That last jump there I gotta be pretty careful about. If I take too long, he'll start to creep up on you faster than you expect. I could just give myself a little bit more distance, but I'm not sure if I actually want that at times. Because I don't want to actually reach the top without doing sufficient damage to him. Uh, watch out, I got hands. Oh no! Keep getting him down to like 20 something health. Alright, we need to put as many spikes into play as possible, because the spikes are, I think, one of the only ones that really seems to knock him back. Even if it's worth taking another extra moment or two, it might be the right idea. At first, I was going to leave a little part of this uh, for you guys to play yourself, but I figured I got this far, I might as well you know, play it out to its conclusion. Oh, the hand! Oh, man. How many times am I going to make the same mistake? I didn't catch either of those two platforms, which is unfortunate. Things are definitely tricky at this point. I'm going to guess this is probably the last uh, sequence as we move up. I have to wonder if there's uh, a little bit of wordplay or irony in the fact that they chose to name this The King's Ascent. You know, and then we are literally ascending towers of blocks, but we are also talking about how a king rose to power, perhaps. I think that's probably somewhat implied, but... Oh, come on, that was gonna be it. If I would have gotten a few more spikes along the way or something, that probably would have been not a big deal. Alright, got all three of those. Get these spires in play, there we go. A few more blocks on the way up many as possible, get all three of these, get over to the spike, walk it across, get the one on the left, that'll knock him back, 20, 16, 9, 8, but I still there we what go. I thought was right. You never did. What you tell yourself doesn't change your actions. If everyone thinks you were as cruel and brutal as I was, how are we different? 
I never wanted to be. Oh, that might have been a real bad move. All right, I didn't know there'd be a booby trap there. Uh, did you see that moment? I actually was sort of stuck, and I actually grabbed onto this little edge that didn't seem to exist, but yet I did anyway. Occasionally, you kind of wish the king could jump a little bit higher, but what are you going to do? You don't really expect him to have, like, jet boots or anything. Well, that will be that. Uh, I didn't realize I was going to have to ride that rocket all the way out of there. Uh, that was kind of foolish. I guess if you don't go up at that point, you're kind of doomed. I wonder how fast going ahead is now going to dictate the movements of the demon. It seems like if you get too far ahead, it might have a little bit of like a rubber band AI type thing. Not sure if there's any validity to that, but just an observation. Oh no! See? Totally stuck once that happens. I wouldn't call it a fatal flaw, necessarily, but it's definitely something that I wish there was a way around. Uh, it kind of sucks that you could, like, screw up your run just because you happen to go down the wrong path, or uh, you accidentally triggered a block you didn't mean to trigger. But, you know, at the same time, the challenge is finding your way up. So you can't be too upset, I suppose. Uh, see? Okay, see, I did it again, thinking for some reason that I'd be able to get up, and those spikes are so important I don't want to pass them by. Uh, but I've created a situation where if you don't jump off at the right moment, you pretty much have to pass them by, and there's not really any way around it. Right, I'll do it one more time. I'm pretty sure I'm going to get it this time. Oh no! Not this time. Apparently I meant next time when I said that. It's a pretty inventive idea for a game, I have to say. I don't think I've really seen much else like it. You know, I've certainly climbed my share of towers and, you know, landed on plenty of blocks in my day. Oh, this should do it. Oh, I went too far ahead, didn't I? Jeez. I was at the top, too. I just need a little bit of better damage output. Maybe I went the wrong path? Did I want to go up to the right? Or maybe I just needed to be more precise? Yeah, that's certainly not going to do it. Well, I suppose the end should be difficult. There's not really any complaint in that. I wasn't necessarily going to play all this far in, but like I said, might as well finish it off. I wonder how many of these are even hitting him. I can't really see all the time where exactly he is. I mean, granted, there is that little marker there. Not to show the center, but he's got quite a lot of width to the mass on him. Alright, I think if I just hit him each time, we should be good to go. There we go. And now we just let him... leave? He is no longer a king, and so he is no longer my concern. Let him go as he pleases. I didn't expect him to survive all that. I did. The throne is empty now. Someone will have to leave this country. You? No. I am filled with revenge and hate, and that should not be the start to a new rule. Someone else must take the throne. Who? A little bit of an unexpected ending. I didn't think that's all that was going to happen. Uh, but I guess it does sort of leave the door open in case they do want to make another game. There could be another story there to tell, I'm sure. Uh, again, pretty interesting how they built some pretty cool characters out of just about nothing. Uh, they were just implied characters, but still there felt to be some depth to it in the fact that they had interactions between each other. And I have to wonder, did they really write this song just for this game? Because this is Pretty elaborate and well done. Uh, so, I guess, without further ado, we'll bring this episode to a close here. Uh, King's Ascent definitely gets two thumbs up for me. Totally should check it out. Uh, totally free to play. It's right in browser. Totally free, again, uh, to just jump into. Uh, you saw all the passwords as well as you went through, so if you just wanted to play one level or something, or... I probably wouldn't want to skip to the end. That seems a little silly, considering it's mostly story-based. But, you know, if you want to try that last challenge, see if you can get a better time or something, or a better... Uh, well, there's not really time or score, so I guess it would just be about how well or smoothly you can get through it. 
Like a no death run. Oh, there goes the theme song I just saw on there. I barely looked at it. So, uh, thanks very much for watching, as always, guys. Uh, the links for this are going to be right in the description. Feel free to go click around, show a friend, talk about it, let people know what's out there. Uh, it's definitely what we're here to do on Indie Impressions. We're here to promote discussion and spread the word about cool indie games you might not have seen. I definitely would consider this one of them. Uh, but if you want to catch up on all the stuff that used to be, uh, you know, a brand new episode itself, feel free to head on over to indie-impressions.com, where I keep every episode archived neatly for your perusal. Uh, over 430 of them now in number and ro uh, growing and rising by the day. Uh, so that would be the place to go. I also have a Facebook page for the show, facebook.com slash Indie Impressions, if you'd like to check that out. That's where I post every day's new episode, uh, so you can keep up on what's new, as well as occasional uh, streaming announcements or... Uh, when I give away games or contests, those also show up there as well. I also have a Twitter handle, which is at RockleySmile, if you'd like to follow me over there. That way you can stay up on uh, whatever is going on on a more personal, individual basis. I tweet pretty frequently, and uh, I also welcome anybody that wants to chat with me about whatever. A quick way to start a dialogue, so if you want to send me a tweet, I definitely welcome it. Uh, I also do take email, and if you're an uh, indie developer or just a viewer, if you want to send me a request for a game to try on the channel, uh, feel free to just hit me up over at the contact form on indie-impressions.com. Uh, aside from that, though, all my social media links are right in the description, as well as, again, the play link for this one. It is a browser game, so no download necessary. Uh, so I do encourage you to check it out. Let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your comments. Uh, if you want to post a, you know, a video reply for this one, if you have a particularly, uh, you know, good run or something, I'm happy to check that out. If it's an excellent video, maybe I'll post it as a reply to this video. It's entirely up to you, though. Just something I always like to put out there in case uh, somebody has a further way to elaborate on what I've done on this particular episode, or any of them, uh, for that matter. So, thanks everybody for watching. I uh, hope you'll come back again tomorrow. New episode every single day. Uh, please be sure to come back, and I will see you tomorrow. Have a lovely night.